Andy Mogul. Two weeks ago, Sucker Punch bombed with both critics and audiences, leading many of us to ponder the possible suckage of Zack Snyder's next film for Warner Brothers, Superman Man of Steel. Then that reminded us that we hadn't really seen any new press materials on another DC property, Green Lantern, since the dubious trailer back in November, which probably meant that sucked too. Finally, on top of all that, these pictures were released from the set of the upcoming Wonder Woman TV show, where it looked like Wonder Woman was sucking on an invisible lemon. Fandom shuddered, and Warner Brothers felt the shockwaves. That led to a full-court publicity press over the last week, so let's take a closer look at that initiative. It all started with Warner Brothers head honcho Jeff Robinov doing an interview with the LA Times that he knew would spread across the internet like wildfire. In it, he assured fans that his main priority was getting a Justice League movie to theaters in 2013. That movie would involve Snyder's Superman, a rebooted Batman because Nolan's trilogy is ending in 2012, and both The Flash and Wonder Woman, with Warner Brothers hoping to spin off movies for both those characters should the Justice League movie connect with audiences. But what about the Wonder Woman TV show? Eh, it'll probably be dead by then. Well, he actually said a movie and the TV show could coexist, but let's get real. As for getting real, why would Warner Brothers reboot the only DC franchise that's working for them? And not just working, but arguably producing the greatest and certainly most successful comic book movie ever made. Even more bizarre, Nolan says he's sticking around to produce the reboot. Or is that to collect a big fat check? Either he should continue his brilliant franchise, or get out of the spotlight and let another smart director take a crack at it. After Robinov's interview, there was WonderCon 2011, or as it will now forever be known, Green Lantern Shock and Awe. Yes, the movie hit the comic book convention with a vengeance, first with a brand new poster and then with four minutes of new footage. And that footage was impressive. Full of action and grandeur, one could actually believe that Martin Campbell was helming this thing. Also, DC Animation screened their newest Green Lantern adventure to further drum up buzz, while Blake Lively promised fans that if they shelled out big bucks to see Green Lantern 1, she would appear in the Star Sapphire costume sooner rather than later. The campaign was a rousing success, getting fans to the level of I'm stoked that Warner Brothers needs them to be. But Green Lantern isn't out of the woods yet. Voiceover actors are still being cast, even though the film comes out June 17th, and producer Donald DeLine has admitted that half of the film's special effects shots have yet to be finished. Furthermore, the film was not shot in 3D and is being converted in post, a process that has yet to please fans. Although, to be fair, none of the summer's comic book movies were shot in 3D. Finally, while fans are on board, will mainstream audiences be interested in a somewhat cartoony and heavily CGI film? Some fans say it's the new Star Wars, but let's not forget what all that CGI and over-elaborate world-building did to the prequels. Now back to that Justice League movie Robinov says this is all building to, what will it look like? For a film that's only two years away, we've only seen one part of the equation, and even that is still untested. And if Christopher Nolan and Christian Bale truly walk away, will audiences ever be able to accept anyone else's version of Batman? You know, just like everyone watching a DC animated movie still wishes they were hearing Kevin Conroy by way of Paul Dini and Bruce Timm. And who can possibly pull off Wonder Woman? Kate Beckinsale doesn't have the box office heft to do it anymore, so maybe Mila Jovovich with Sigourney Weaver as her mother. Or perhaps Angelina Jolie, since she didn't get the role of Catwoman as she wanted. And as for The Flash, everyone wanted Ryan Reynolds, but he's already on the team. However, if you really want to get excited about a possible Justice League movie, go check out the DC Universe Online cinematic trailer from Comic-Con 2010. It's simply amazing. Why not get that guy to direct the Justice League movie? And why not make him computer animated? Video game animation is getting so good, it's hard to tell it from live action sometimes. And that would allow for the characters, unhindered by live action budget restraints, to really cut loose on screen. What do you think? Write your thoughts down below and be sure to check back here on Beyond the Trailer for more DC movie news and reviews.